One of my favorite U2 songs is called Grace. Are, are you familiar with it? Have you heard it? One of the lines that Bono sings in that song says, Grace finds beauty in everything. What once was hurt, what once was friction, what left a mark no longer stings because grace makes beauty out of ugly things. Isn't that great? Bra grace brings beauty out of ugly things. Today in our Relationship Matters series, I'm speaking on shame, shame, are you to blame? Dealing with shame versus grace in your relationships. Because here's the truth. The truth is most love relationships fall into one of two categories. Either a grace-based relationship or a shame-based relationship. And by the way, let me say two things as I begin this teaching today. First of all, what I preach and teach here is always the shorter version of the entire sermon. The longer version, or the, the full sermon, if you will, is what you would hear at one of our in-person services here in Brandon on Sunday mornings. Then secondly, uh, like last week, much of the content that I will be sharing with you today comes directly from an amazing book called Families Where Grace is in Place by a man named Jeff Van Bonderen. I highly recommend uh, if you're interested in taking your relationships to another level, I highly recommend that book. All right, three things quickly, beginning with this. A grace-based relationship is not the same as a shame-based relationship. And incidentally, don't confuse shame with guilt because the truth is those are not the same thing. In fact, they are actually polar opposites. Guilt is that spiritual sense or feeling within us that responds when we do something that's hurtful or wrong or, or sinful. Guilt in that sense is quite a good thing because it's a reminder that we should make a different choice than the ones we are making. A choice that will be helpful, not hurtful. And then as we make that choice, which by the way, that's repentance. Repentance means changing your mind, making a new choice. When we do that, the guilt goes away. Shame, on the other hand, is not just a feeling, although that's what we often say. You should feel so ashamed of yourself, right? But shame is not just a feeling about something you did. Rather, now listen, rather shame speaks to who you are. Shame is the mindset that something is wrong with you. And listen, when that happens, you begin to look at everything in life, in and about your life, through this lens, then, uh, of shame. And you see, so, and, and you see everyone else uh, as making mistakes, but you, you see yourself as pretty much deficient or defective or less than. That's the reason why you make the mistake. That's shame. For years after my birth father left us when I was a young boy, I thought, it must be me. What is wrong with me that he would not stay and want to be my daddy? And of course, as I grew older, I was able to understand things from a more mature perspective. And I learned that his leaving had nothing at all to do with me uh, personally. Sadly, though, Many people who were wounded like I was carry those wounds right into adulthood where they start building shame-based families and become part of shame-based churches and groups and, and whatever. And while guilt does its job and moves on, shame hangs around, doesn't it? And it invades every relationship we have, even our relationship with God. Why should I pray? I can never live up to God's standards. He doesn't really want me or see me as His beloved. And then sadly, the church comes along and reinforces that, uh, the, the fact that God hates sin, reinforces the fact that he can't look upon it, he can't tolerate even a whiff of sin, which is absolutely not true, by the way, and, and I'll save that for another message uh, later in the year. So, you know what happens then? What happens then is you begin to live in this four-step process when you're living under shame. The process goes like this, you try... You try harder, you try your hardest, and then you just give up. You just accept defeat. I am never going to be worthy. 
And oh, how religion thrives on those who are blinded to their worthiness because of shame. Ah, but grace, like Pastor Bono said, grace takes the blame and covers the shame. Grace makes beauty even out of ugly things. So a grace-based relationship is not the same as a shame-based relationship. And secondly, a grace-based relationship is not mixed with the law. The law says we have to earn God's love and His acceptance and blessing and forgiveness based solely on what we do or don't do. Grace, however, says we have God's love and acceptance and blessing and forgiveness regardless of what we do or we don't do. But here's the deal. Between law and grace, there lies this very dangerous middle ground, a toxic spiritual wasteland which says that even though we have God's forgiveness, our standing with Him is only as good as our human efforts to live right. For instance, were you ever made to feel like you couldn't go to church until you cleaned up your act? Do you feel bad when you haven't had a quiet time in in like a week or so? Do, Do you feel less spiritual if you don't tithe one week? By the way, you should. No, I'm kidding. Or, or, or this, does guilt over sin in your life cause you to run away from God rather than to God? Those are all signs that you are stuck in that toxic wasteland between law and grace. And here's the problem with that. It is that all our law-based behaviors destroy intimacy with God because they focus in on our shortcomings instead of Jesus' provision for us. They cause us to try to hide from God instead of embracing Him. And they leave us trapped by fear and incarcerated by shame. They keep us from living in the fullness and the abundance that Jesus came to give us, that that Jesus promised us. Now look what this does to a relationship. I think we can all agree that a pure law-based marriage, law-based love relationship, that's not a good thing. That's, uh, that's one where things are so legalistic that a single mess up exiles you to the, ver- the, to the proverbial doghouse or in some cases even worse. Purely law-based relationships are filled with judgment and punishment and fear. However, almost as bleak are relationships where grace is spoken with our mouths while we hold the law deep in our hearts. In other words, we give grace to our partner to an extent, but we still base our actions on what our partner does or doesn't do or on how much they give to us. Let me give you a for example. For example, did you ever do something really nice for yourself uh, or for your spouse? Let's say you do something nice for your spouse and you do it primarily because you want to bless him or her. That's good, and we should be doing those things. Now, how about this? Did you ever do something nice for your spouse, for your lover, just so you could have some leverage later, like when you wanted him to help with the dishes, or you wanted a new dress, or he wanted to, or, or you want to go fishing? How many of you know what I mean by that? A grace perspective allows you to give without the expectation of getting something or anything in return. When your spouse or your family member says something to you that feels disrespectful, how how do you respond? Do you react right back to them? Or do you just withdraw from that person and, and, and put up a wall? Or do you stay engaged, gently bringing it to his or her attention and try to seek to understand the why behind their comment? You, you see, grace always assumes the best. Grace is always quick to forgive. Grace always refuses to break connection uh, above all. Or, Or this. What happens when you do something really dumb that you know is going to affect your spouse and will most likely get you into some trouble? Like... Like the guy I saw on the news who was at the Lightning hockey game last year, while standing behind a TV reporter... This guy pulls up his shirt and he rubs his great big belly while he's screaming, Get you some of this, mama! 
And I noticed he had a wedding, a wedding, wedding ring on. Everybody was laughing, of course, in the studio. Uh, and I noticed he had a wedding ring on. And I thought to myself, I wonder how happy Mama will be when she sees that on TV. Anyway, when we do something dumb and we know our spouse is not going to be happy about it, do we want to hide it for fear of judgment, retribution, or do we want to quickly go to them in order to repair the damage and make things right? There's a difference. So listen, if your marriage is grace-based, you know that relationship matters more than being able to follow all the rules. And then what happens is you find yourself at a place where you are loving someone simply because of who they are, period. And that's not always easy, for sure. In fact, it can, it can often be very difficult. Because our reactive and selfish instincts, instincts will fight against us and stand in our way when we're trying to give grace. Yet, giving it to the other person still must be our goal. So, a grace-based relationship is not the same as a shame-based relationship. It is not mixed with the law. And third, a grace-based relationship focuses on a person, not on a performance. Everyone deserves to live in an environment where they feel like they are accepted and where they are shown love because of who they are, not what they do. In a grace-filled family, love and acceptance don't ever vary. But in a shame-based family, behavior always trumps everything. Like this, did you ever have one of your children mistreat his or her sibling? Maybe call them names or even, or even hit them? Our response as parents to that can be something like this. Shame on you. Shame on you. How could you do such a thing to your sister? Or it can be, I don't like how you're acting with your sister. Or better still, it can be, Johnny, I love you. That will never change. But right now, I don't really like the way you're treating your sister. You see the difference in those responses? And listen, this applies in adult relationships too. Love and acceptance should never be based on whether your spouse or partner lives up to your expectation uh, of what he or she should be. Work on those expectations, yes. Talk about them, yes. Define them, yes. But don't let them be the basis for shame and rejection. And listen, for those of you who've been the victim of abusive and shame-based relationships in your life, I want you to hear something. Listen to this carefully. You are not valuable and acceptable because of how much money you have or how, what clothes you wear or your physical features or your personality, even if you, or even if you behave well or don't behave well. No, because no matter what anyone has told you about you, their words don't get to define the truth about you. God and God alone gets that privilege. And do you know what he says about you? Let me give you two things. In Psalm 139, he says, You are meticulously and beautifully fashioned by God. In Romans 9, Paul said, I will call those who were not my people, my people, and her who is not beloved, my beloved. And that's just a sampling of what God, listen, says about you. So if shame has taken its toll, remember this. Here's a great exercise for you to learn. First of all, memorize and speak often the words of Romans chapter 4, verse 17, where it says, call those things that are not as though they were. In other words, it's speaking about faith there. Then second, when life gets tough or is tough because shame has continued to beat you down, here's what you do. After memorizing that verse, you just haul off and declare, as of this day, this moment, I am no longer what some, someone told me that I was. I am this day and forever God's meticulous and beautiful creation. I am righteous through and through. I am greatly beloved of God Himself. That'd be a great exercise for you to incorporate <clears throat> in your day to day. Bono said grace. She takes the blame. She covers the stain, shame, and she removes the stain. What once was hurt, what once was friction, what left a mark no longer stings because grace makes beauty out of ugly things. Yes, grace finds beauty in everything. 
and I might add, in every one. Yes, which means you. Say this with me. Point at yourself and say, that means me. And it does. Hey, I hope this has helped you today. God bless you. Um, Thank you for joining me. Let me say a prayer over you before I close today. And uh, if you have any questions for me, please send me an email on our website, newdaychurchbrandon.org. Or you can uh, contact me by personal message on social media. Father, I pray right now for everyone watching this. Would you establish stability and strength in all of our lives that we would live a grace-filled life, especially in our relationships to to those we love the most, those we live with. Cause us to learn how to better live in that grace-based relationship and reject that shame. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.